In physics, the electric dipole moment is a measure of the separation of positive and negative electrical charges in a system of electric charges, that is, a measure of the charge system's overall polarity. The SI units are Coulomb meter. This article is limited to static phenomena, and does not describe time-dependent or dynamic polarization. The magnitude of dipole moment determines the electric field strength. Elementary definition In the simple case of two-point charges, one with charge plus Q and the other one with charge AQ, the electric dipole moment P is where D is the displacement vector pointing from the negative charge to the positive charge. Thus, the electric dipole moment vector P points from the negative charge to the positive charge. An idealization of this two-charge system is the electrical point dipole consisting of two charges only infinitesimally separated, but with a finite P. Torque An object with an electric dipole moment is subject to a torque I, when placed in an external electric field. The torque tends to align the dipole with the field. A dipole aligned parallel to an electric field has lower potential energy than a dipole making some angle with it. For a spatially uniform electric field E, the torque is given by where P is the dipole moment, and the symbol A refers to the vector cross product. A field vector and the dipole vector define a plane, and the torque is directed normal to that plane with the direction given by the right hand rule. A dipole placed parallel or antiparallel to the direction in which a non uniform electric field is increasing will not experience a torque, only a force in the direction of its dipole moment. It can be shown that this force will always be parallel to the dipole moment regardless of parallel or antiparallel orientation of the dipole. Expression More generally, for a continuous distribution of charge confined to a volume V, the corresponding expression for the dipole moment is where R locates the point of observation and D3RO denotes an elementary volume in V. For an array of point charges, the charge density becomes a sum of Dirac delta functions, where each re is a vector from some reference point to the charge key. Substitution into the above integration formula provides. This expression is equivalent to the previous expression in the case of charge neutrality and N equals 2. For two opposite charges, denoting the location of the positive charge of the pair as a plus and the location of the negative charge as ra, a euro, showing that the dipole moment vector is directed from the negative charge to the positive charge because the position vector of a point is directed outward from the origin to that point. The dipole moment is most easily understood when the system has an overall neutral charge. For example, a pair of opposite charges, or a neutral conductor in a uniform electric field. For a system of charges with no net charge, visualized as an array of paired opposite charges, the relation for electric dipole moment is, which is the vector sum of the individual dipole moments of the neutral charge pairs. Thus, the value of P is independent of the choice of reference point, provided the overall charge of the system is zero. When discussing the dipole moment of a non-neutral system, such as the dipole moment of the proton, a dependence on the choice of reference point arises. In such cases it is conventional to choose the reference point to be the center of mass of the system, not some arbitrary origin. For a charged molecule the center of charge should be the reference point instead of the center of mass. For neutral systems the reference's point is not important. The dipole moment is an intrinsic property of the system. Potential and field of an electric dipole an ideal dipole consists of two opposite charges with infinitesimal separation. The potential and field of such an ideal dipole are found next as a limiting case of an example of two opposite charges at non-zero separation. Two closely spaced opposite charges have a potential of the form with charge separation, d, defined as the position relative to their center of mass, r, and the unit vector in the direction of r are given by Taylor expansion in DR allows this potential to be expressed as a series. Where higher order terms in the series are vanishing at large distances, R, compared to D. Here, the electric dipole moment P is, as above. The result for the dipole potential also can be expressed as, which relates the dipole potential to that of a point charge. 
A key point is that the potential of the dipole falls off faster with distance other than that of the point charge. The electric field of the dipole is the negative gradient of the potential, leading to. Thus, although two closely spaced opposite charges are not quite an ideal electric dipole, at distances much larger than their separation, their dipole moment P appears directly in their potential and field. As the two charges are brought closer together, the dipole term in the multipole expansion based on the ratio dr becomes the only significant term at ever closer distances r, and in the limit of infinitesimal separation the dipole term in this expansion is all that matters. As d is made infinitesimal, however, the dipole charge must be made to increase to hold p constant. This limiting process results in a point dipole. Dipole moment density and polarization density the dipole moment of an array of charges determines the degree of polarity of the array, but for a neutral array it is simply a vector property of the array with no information about the array's absolute location. The dipole moment density of the array P, R, contains both the location of the array and its dipole moment. When it comes time to calculate the electric field in some region containing the array, Maxwell's equations are solved and the information about the charge array is contained in the polarization density P, R, of Maxwell's equations. Depending upon how fine-grained an assessment of the electric field is required, more or less information about the charge array will have to be expressed by P, R. As explained below, sometimes it is sufficiently accurate to take P, R, equals P, R. Sometimes a more detailed description is needed and sometimes even more elaborate versions of P, R, are necessary. It now is explored just in what way the polarization density P, R, that enters Maxwell's equations is related to the dipole moment P of an overall neutral array of charges, and also to the dipole moment density P, R. Only static situations are considered in what follows, so P, R, has no time dependence and there is no displacement current. First is some discussion of the polarization density P, R. That discussion is followed with several particular examples. A formulation of Maxwell's equations based upon division of charges and currents into free, and bound charges and currents leads to introduction of the D and P fields. Where P is called the polarization density. In this formulation, the divergence of this equation yields and as the divergence term in E is the total charge, and IF is free charge, we are left with the relation. With IB as the bound charge, by which is meant the difference between the total and the free charge densities. As an aside, in the absence of magnetic effects, Maxwell's equations specify that. Which implies. Applying Helmholtz decomposition. For some scalar potential I, and. Suppose the charges are divided into free and bound, and the potential is divided into. Satisfaction of the boundary conditions upon I may be divided arbitrarily between IF and IB because only the sum I must satisfy these conditions. It follows that P is simply proportional to the electric field due to the charges selected as bound, with boundary conditions that prove convenient. In particular, when no free charge is present, one possible choice is P equals I micron zero E. Next is discussed how several different dipole moment descriptions of a medium relate to the polarization entering Maxwell's equations. Equals medium with charge and dipole densities equals, as described next, a model for polarization moment density P, R, results in a polarization. Restricted to the same model. For a smoothly varying dipole moment distribution P, R, the corresponding bound charge density is simply, as we will establish shortly via integration by parts. However, if P, R, exhibits an abrupt step in dipole moment at a boundary between two regions, A A euro cent P, R, results in a surface charge component of bound charge. This surface charge can be treated through a surface integral, or by using discontinuity conditions at the boundary as illustrated in the various examples below. As a first example relating dipole moment to polarization, consider a medium made up of a continuous charge density I, R, and a continuous dipole moment distribution P, R. The potential at a position R is 
where I, R, is the unpaired charge density, and P, R, is the dipole moment density. Using an identity. The polarization integral can be transformed. The first term can be transformed to an integral over the surface bounding the volume of integration, and contributes a surface charge density, discussed later. Putting this result back into the potential, and ignoring the surface charge for now. Where the volume integration extends only up to the bounding surface, and does not include this surface. The potential is determined by the total charge, which the above shows consists of. Showing that. In short, the dipole moment density P, R, plays the role of the polarization density P for this medium. Notice, P, R, has a non-zero divergence equal to the bound charge density. It may be noted that this approach can be extended to include all the multipoles, dipole, quadrupole, etc. Using the relation, the polarization density is found to be where the added terms are meant to indicate contributions from higher multipoles. Evidently, inclusion of higher multipoles signifies that the polarization density P no longer is determined by a dipole moment density P alone. For example, in considering scattering from a charge array, different multipoles scatter an electromagnetic wave differently and independently, requiring a representation of the charges that goes beyond the dipole approximation. Surface charge. Above, discussion was deferred for the first term in the expression for the potential due to the dipoles. Integrating the divergence results in a surface charge. The figure at the right provides an intuitive idea of why a surface charge arises. The figure shows a uniform array of identical dipoles between two surfaces. Internally, the heads and tails of dipoles are adjacent and cancel. At the bounding surfaces, However, no cancellation occurs. Instead, on one surface the dipole heads create a positive surface charge, while at the opposite surface the dipole tails create a negative surface charge. These two opposite surface charges create a net electric field in a direction opposite to the direction of the dipoles. This idea is given mathematical form using the potential expression above. The potential is Using the divergence theorem, the divergence term transforms into the surface integral, with dar O an element of surface area of the volume. In the event that P, R, is a constant, only the surface term survives, with dar O an elementary area of the surface bounding the charges. In words, the potential due to a constant P inside the surface is equivalent to that of a surface charge which is positive for surface elements with a component in the direction of P and negative for surface elements pointed oppositely. If the bounding surface is a sphere, and the point of observation is at the center of the sphere, the integration over the surface of the sphere is zero, the positive and negative surface charge contributions to the potential cancel. If the point of observation is off-center, however, a net potential can result because the positive and negative charges are at different distances from the point of observation. The field due to the surface charge is which, at the center of a spherical bounding surface is not zero but is instead. If we suppose the polarization of the dipoles was induced by an external field, the polarization field opposes the applied field and sometimes is called a depolarization field. In the case when the polarization is outside a spherical cavity, the field in the cavity due to the surrounding dipoles is in the same direction as the polarization. In particular, if the electric susceptibility is introduced through the approximation, where E, in this case and in the following, represent the external field which induces the polarization. Then, whenever I, R, is used to model a step discontinuity at the boundary between two regions, the step produces a surface charge layer. For example, integrating along a normal to the bounding surface from a point just interior to one surface to another point just exterior. Where an, I copyright N indicate the area and volume of an elementary region straddling the boundary between the regions, and a unit normal to the surface. The right side vanishes as the volume shrinks, in as much as IB is finite, indicating a discontinuity in E and therefore a surface charge. That is, 
where the modeled medium includes a step in permittivity, the polarization density corresponding to the dipole moment density. Necessarily includes the contribution of a surface charge. A physically more realistic modeling of P, R, would have the dipole moment density drop off rapidly, but smoothly to zero at the boundary of the confining region, rather than making a sudden step to zero density. Then the surface charge will not concentrate in an infinitely thin surface, but instead, being the divergence of a smoothly varying dipole moment density, will distribute itself throughout a thin, but finite transition layer. Dielectric sphere in uniform external electric field. The above general remarks about surface charge are made more concrete by considering the example of a dielectric sphere in a uniform electric field. The sphere is found to adopt a surface charge related to the dipole moment of its interior. A uniform external electric field is supposed to point in the Z direction, and spherical polar coordinates are introduced so the potential created by this field is. The sphere is assumed to be described by a dielectric constant I, that is. And inside the sphere the potential satisfies Laplace's equation. Skipping a few details, the solution inside the sphere is. While outside the sphere. At large distances, I, A I A so B equals A continuity of potential and of the radial component of displacement D equals I I micron O E determine the other two constants. Supposing the radius of the sphere is R. As a consequence, the potential is. Which is the potential due to applied field and, in addition, a dipole in the direction of the applied field of dipole moment. Or, per unit volume. The factor slash, I plus 2, is called the Clausius-Mossotti factor and showed that the induced polarization flips sign if I.